need to be some quick lessons learned because the next Hmm. election is right around the corner. Wow. Okay. so how soon is uh, the next election? So early voting begins February 13th for the special election to fill a seat Hmm. in southeast Queens and Far Rockaway. That's 31st District, Donovan Richards' old seat. He, of course, is the new borough president. The official special election day is February 23rd, but still we're talking a quick turnaround. And then there are two more special elections in the Bronx in March. And now, David, the kicker to all of this, the people who win these city council specials become incumbents, but just for now. Mm. If they want to be elected to the full term, they need to run again in the June (sighs) primary and in the November general election. Okay, so lots of chances to figure out ranked choice voting uh, during all of that. WNYC's Bridget Bergen, thank you for joining us. Thank you. WNYC supporters include The Carlos Watson Show. Journalist, CEO, and talk show host Carlos Watson is dedicated to taking viewers out of the echo chamber. From Mark Cuban and Padma Lakshmi to Megan Kelly and ta Coates, weekdays on YouTube. Amazon Prime Video and the limited series Small Acts, a collection of five films from director Steve McQueen and starring John Boyega, Sean Parks, and Letitia Wright. The limited series is available for Guild members at ConsiderAmazon.com. The Marketplace Morning Report is coming up next here on WNYC. And then in 10 minutes at 9 o'clock, it's the BBC News Hour on 93.9 FM. Let's check in with London to see what they're working on. Good morning, WNYC. I'm James Menendez. Today on News Hour, we'll be reporting from Wuhan in China, where the COVID pandemic began, but where many now believe the virus was brought in from abroad. Also, Google's threatening to switch off its search engine in Australia if it's made to pay for linking to local news sites. That's BBC NewsHour at 9 on 93.9 FM, WNYC. 39 degrees now in Central Park, mostly sunny and breezy today with a high around 43 degrees. Tonight, partly cloudy with a low of 28. There's some fresh pandemic relief from the White House. Marketplace Morning Report is supported by Progressive Insurance, protecting small businesses with specialized coverages for commercial vehicles. More at ProgressiveCommercial.com. And by Indeed, committed to delivering quality candidates so businesses can focus on interviewing people with the skills they need. Learn more at Indeed.com slash credit. I'm David Brancaccio. President Joe Biden has signed some more executive actions and other measures to bolster economic relief and protections for workers. Marketplace's Jasmine Garst joins us now. Jasmine, this includes more food assistance for people. Yes, Biden is expected to ask the Agriculture Department to expand food assistance, what we used to call food stamps, by 15 percent. And that's to match the cost of meals kids would be receiving if they were still going in person to school. That would be roughly an extra $100 every two months for a family of three. The order will also expand overall access to emergency increases in food assistance. What else is on the table? Biden is expected to ask agencies to improve the distribution of stimulus checks, which, as you know, has been a major issue throughout the pandemic. Yeah. And what's on the unemployment benefits front here? The president will be asking the Labor Department to clarify that workers have the right to refuse jobs with unsafe working conditions and still receive unemployment benefits. Uh, And a a key issue the new administration is expected to tackle is raising the federal minimum wage, and we're expecting to see some movement on that soon? Absolutely. The president is expected to direct agencies to start planning for a $15 minimum wage for federal workers and contractors. What does any of this mean for a big relief package, a new one? The administration has said it is not a substitute for comprehensive legislative relief. Uh, This is more of a lifeline, while the nearly $2 trillion aid package moves through Congress. Marketplaces, Yasmin Garst, thank you. A down day for stock index futures so far. The S&P future is down seven-tenths of a percent after the underlying index hit a record high yesterday. The Dow future now down 241 points, eight-tenths percent. The Nasdaq future down six-tenths percent. The cryptocurrency Bitcoin is up slightly this morning after dropping yesterday. It was down 30 percent from its recent all-time high. Google says it could withdraw its search engine completely from Australia if that country forces it to pay media outlets for their news content. The government in Canberra says the planned reforms will raise money for struggling publishers to continue journalism in the public interest. From Sydney, Shaima Khalil reports. 
Google, Facebook and other big tech firms have been resisting proposed legislation which will force them to negotiate with Australian news outlets over payment for the content which appears on their platforms. Google's threat to remove its search engine from the country is its most severe yet. The company's managing director in Australia, Mel Silva, told a Senate hearing that the laws were unworkable. If this version of the code were to become law, it would give us no real choice but to stop making Google search available in Australia. The Prime Minister, Scott Morrison, said lawmakers would not yield to threats. The government has argued that because the tech platforms gain customers from people who read the news, they should pay newsrooms a fair amount for their journalism. The BBC's Shama Khalil. Marketplace Morning Report is supported by Merrill. Merrill Edge Self-Directed Investing has tools to help clients find answers to questions. More at MerrillEdge.com slash within reach. Merrill Lynch, Pierce, Fenner & Smith Incorporated, registered broker dealer. And by C3.ai. C3.ai software enables organizations to use artificial intelligence at enterprise scale, solving previously unsolvable business problems. Learn more at C3.ai. Battered arts organizations are hoping for more love from the Biden administration. For now, there's $15 billion in grants in the latest COVID relief bill for concert venues that include music clubs, movie houses and live theaters, including Broadway and more. Many are closed and looking for ways to survive 2021. Marketplace's Nancy Marshall Genzer takes a look. First in line for the grants, businesses and venues whose revenues have dropped by more than 90 percent. Chris Johnson would qualify. He owns 15 movie theaters in Illinois and Wisconsin. We're down 99 and a half percent. We're waiting to get back open. All of Johnson's theaters are closed now. He's hoping to reopen in February or March with the new Tom and Jerry movie. <laughs> followed by Marvel's Black Widow. We have unfinished business. If it's released by then. In the meantime, Johnson will continue opening his theaters for private events. Last year, a dance school showed a video of a recital that parents would normally watch live. Actually, it was kind of funny because they got to watch it in recliners. Johnson is also charging up to $250 a day for personal messages on his theater's marquees. Happy birthday, uh, love, you know, the kids or whatever it is. And people are doing messages to their dogs. But Johnson says he still needs a grant for rent, payroll, utilities. Audrey Fix Schaefer works for IMP, which owns several live music venues in the Washington, D.C. area. All have been closed since last March, and she has no idea when they'll reopen. If I had a crystal ball, it would be in shards of glass at my feet right now. Fix Schaefer is hoping for some outdoor shows this summer, moving indoors by the end of this year. But even after live venues are allowed to reopen, Fix Schaefer says it'll still take a while for them to book bands. There's so many intricacies in it that it will be three to five months. During that time, they'll keep losing money. Colorado State Arts Management Professor Michael Seaman says that would be a continuation of last year. Just for fine and performing arts, we estimated between April and July of 2020, there was about $42 billion that was lost. Seaman says the $15 billion in COVID grant money is a great start, but the arts business will need more federal help to survive an uncertain year. I'm Nancy Marshall Genzer for Marketplace. Parler, the social media site popular with right-wing extremists, is still mostly offline today. Amazon stopped storing and distributing Parler using its cloud computing network after the users there continued to post violent messages and support for the ransacking of the U.S. Capitol. Now, a federal judge yesterday turned down a bid to force Amazon to restore Parler. However, the judge did say there are substantive underlying claims against Amazon that have to be evaluated. However, these didn't rise to a level that would prompt an immediate court order, apparently. The chair of the House Oversight and Reform Committee asked the FBI yesterday to conduct a, quote, robust examination of Parler, including its sources of funding. I'm David Brancaccio. You're listening to the Marketplace Morning Report. PM American Public Media Support for-